on hope. Jesus, I don't know how you do this. Abort, abort. I'll try one more. Okay, go around. I'd rather catch job ones than do this. Don't get below that, RV. Oh, that's not good. Whoa. Between them, 10,300 hours logged in the air. Robert Reichert, Air Force test pilot, 10,000 hours. Mark Miller, wildlife filmmaker, 300 hours. Two men, two very different worlds, one love. It's time to kick the tires, light the fires, and get this puppy in the air. They are the Air Dogs. Check in your mirrors, though. You never know. The Air Dogs have decided they need a little R&R, &R, so they've packed up the RV and have decided to hit the air show circuit. So I got this friend of mine who flies a yellow interstate cadet. Wow! Does he know how to fly? Rooster wants to catch up with an old buddy. He should be around here somewhere. Oh, my goodness. I'm gambling up here, man. Now, anyone who calls Rooster a friend likely knows how to get your attention. Kent Peach is no exception. <laughs> I guess you found him, right? That window full of yellow is Kent's interstate cadet. <laughs> so this is your friend? That's his right aileron just fell off. Sure. Whoa. Is this crazy? Kent is just finishing up another air show performance. He and Rooster have been scheming and thinking Mark needs a little air show experience, a taste of the high hour big leagues. Rooster claims Kent is the king of this RV landing thing. Apparently, they get an RV going down the runway 60 miles an hour. Kent flies in over top of the thing, matches speed, and somehow puts his airplane on top. Go, go, go. No smoke and mirrors here. Screw up, and there'll be more than a bit of broken glass to clean up. And he's always got to do it into the wind, obviously, right? Yeah. Why? But he's dealing with the crosswind here. He's got a left hand crosswind. So what you'll see is you'll see the left wheel on the ramp first, so he lands. He'll slip it upwind. in a little bit. Yeah, slip it in, but he'll land left wheel first. Go, go, go. There, ladies and gentlemen, one of the strangest sights you will ever see an airplane riding on the top of a recreational vehicle. Oh, Unbelievable. Now, what Mark doesn't know is that Rooster and Kent have cooked up a plan to teach the air dogs how to do the RV landing. Sound crazy? Do you well, think we can do this? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going to give it a try yeah. anyways. Well, let's just say the air dogs aren't exactly the smartest boys on the flight deck. So what do you guys think? You ever want to try something like that? Did he, do it. Did he tell you how many hours I have? No, not many. Well, we talked a little bit about you, but it wasn't anything good. Did I say so 4,000? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's give it a try. No guarantees. Happens. So the air dogs have their mission. Fly a vintage plane onto a tiny landing strip. Now, are you still a little bit concerned? For our test pilot, it'll be tough. And I know it's tricky. For our weekend warrior, I'm worried. It should be downright interesting. Like we're having a lot of fun here, but this is really serious flying. Coming up, the boys come down with a little yellow fever. He said, this guy's my buddy. We can do this. It, it's easy. Those were your words. As they get that sick feeling. I don't recall that conversation. That once again, they've bitten off way more than they can chew. Now, for some reason, Rooster's managed to convince his old pal, Kent Peach, to teach the air dogs, Mark included, how to land an old military trainer on the back of a moving RV. A useful bit of skill, just in case you're ever forced down over a trailer park. The air show is wrapped up, and the boys have moved to a smaller airfield, and already, they're up against it. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. We went to Pitt Meadows because somebody said it was a 9,000 foot runway that we could use. And it's not. We, I was in the briefing this morning. 
and found out it's a 4,800-foot runway. Now, the runway where Kent just performed was 10,000 feet, giving him more than two minutes to line up for his landing. With the runway here less than half that, the boys are going to have to work real fast. I mean, this runway is not very long. It's actually really short, so I, I don't know if we can do it. So if you can't get past getting into the airplane, it's going to be pretty hard to fly it. But let's just worry about the basics for now. This is the throttle. It's upside down for most airplanes. So, it goes so forward? Yeah, forward like that, and then back closely. Okay. Like. The airplane the boys will fly is a piece of history. The Interstate Cadet is a modest little aircraft that once served as a frontline trainer in World War II. And this airplane here was built one month and three days before Pearl Harbor. One just like it was shot at in Pearl Harbor. First airplane in the United States to be shot at was one of these. Now the boys are eager to give the landing strip the once over. The steel plate welded onto the top of the RV is just wide enough for the Interstate Cadet's two wheels. At the front, there are two wheel wells, and to successfully complete the stunt, the aircraft must lock into these, and the RV must come to a complete stop. It's risky and challenging, and the air dogs, well, they figure they're ready for it. There's just one small problem. I can't seem to get them down from the RV. Scared of heights. It seems their fear of heights has them more terrified than the mission. Okay, somebody's got to talk me down from this thing. Let's get back to the airplane for now. The Interstate Cadet is a good, simple aircraft to fly. It's a good plane for Mark to start out in, but there's one big problem. This would be Miller's first time in the tail dragger. Can't ask me how much time I had in the tail dragger, and uh, basically I have to say I have this much time. <laughs> that isn't very good. A tail dragger is a lot different from what Mark normally flies, a tricycle gear airplane. I hope I don't scratch your airplane. You won't. He'll need to be careful not to ground loop the plane before even getting into the air. Basically, a ground loop is sort of almost like a death wobble on like a motorcycle or a skateboard. You try to correct that oscillation when you're on the ground, and if you don't get on top of it quickly, it gets worse and worse and worse. Eventually, the airplane will swap ends. Uh, you could end up in the grass. You could tear off the gear. You could potentially even tip the airplane over, and that's a great way to ruin a vintage airplane. Contact. Kent needs to get Mark comfortable in the plane before letting him have a crack at the RV. So it's off for a little flight training. I think my friend Mark right now is reconsidering this. <laughs> so I'm just trying to get a feel for the crazy thing. Right, I understand. Okay. What I really want to see is if Miller really does think that he has the confidence to do it. This is a this is a key thing in his learning curve. How are we looking? Pull that speed until you get down near the ground and then just keep wearing it out. There you go. All right. Actually, once I got up there, it was actually surprisingly easy to fly, basic flying. And it makes a lot of sense because it was a trainer during World War II. You were sticking farm kids up there who'd never been up in an airplane before, so the aircraft had to be forgiving. Anyway, lots of uh, easy, simple inputs. It reacted really well. Not a lot of power, but super fun to fly. How's that? Good. With Mark now comfortable in the cadet, Kent decides this air dog is ready to start learning about precision flying. This time we'll have you do a wheel landing. Just to land with the wheels and don't let the tail wheel touch. Okay. So this is similar to what you might be doing on in the RV. Uh, okay. This practice should help Mark control the airplane when he lines up on the edge of the moving RV. Ken was teaching me these wheel landing that was really kind of counterintuitive and hard for me to understand. And, like almost uncomfortable, but you would land it, stick it, and then you push the nose forward, and the airplane would end up kind of going up at this angle. And uh, I kept on worrying we'd get a prop strike, and Kent said, no, that's not gonna happen, but still, it just sort of like, you know, it was very uncomfortable. I didn't enjoy that. Looking good, looking nice. I'm just sitting back here relaxing. For a first flight, it's pretty good, especially for a guy with low hours and no time in a tail dragger. Oh, it's hot in here. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was sweating. <laughs> you did a good job. Who's Mike. next in this thing here? You? Mr. Is. Get I your am. suit on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so did I do better than that? Hey, put it right on the edge. Beautiful. Beautiful, man. 
Excellent. Rooster's flight, as you'd expect, is even smoother, but he's got a big advantage. Rooster has got some flying time. His dad taught him how to fly tail wheels when he was a young kid. In all, Rooster's actually logged about 3,000 hours in a tail dragger, not to mention he's a real test pilot. But flying along the edge of a runway is one thing, flying onto a moving runway eight feet wide and 25 feet long is quite another. I'm gonna give it a go, but I'm not gonna say 30 feet off the mat, I don't start to cry like a, <laughs> like a, like a baby. Before the boys fly it, they want one last good look. They want to see how Kit does it. Go, go, go. But everybody needs to hurry. The weather's getting worse by the minute. Who did we sign on to? And rain is threatening to scrub the mission. Look at, look at him on the power. Though. Kent's done this hundreds of times, so his landings look flawless. All right, man. Yep, here goes the locks there. Lock left. He's got to stop it. This was not my idea. I, I don't remember. Was this my idea? Unfortunately, the boys aren't going to get a chance to match it tonight. As the rain starts, everybody decides to call it a day. Mark's not too keen on that. The thing is, I thought we were gonna do this today, now I gotta sleep one more time uh, thinking about this. The slippery landing deck is not a great place to learn a tough stunt. You don't have to do it, and it, it's a good thing to get away when you don't feel good about it. Well, is it too late to pull out just right now and just say, uh... <laughs> no, sorry, you have to do it. The air dogs will have to wait. I'd rather catch javelins than do this. It's a new day, and the air dogs are ready for the challenge. Kent Peach and Rooster have cooked up a plan that has the air dogs chasing one of the toughest air show stunts there is. The goal? Land a vintage airplane on the back of a moving RV. This is no summer vacation. A little bit on the ambitious scale, yeah. I think Elmer the safety elephant is just a tiny bit concerned here about this. We watched Kent do it yesterday. I mean, it is hard. If I touch a wheel, I'll be happy. I doubt I can do it, but you know what? I'm not smart enough to say no. Now, landing on a nice, smooth runway is one thing, but landing on a moving object is another. OK, I'm getting tired. Physics dictates the RV is going to be kicking up a lot of turbulence. So the nice smooth air that normally comes with a nice smooth landing is out of the picture. And the air dogs will need to understand that. As you can see, the deck goes out in front of the uh, camper about four feet, and it packs air, and it has to have the air escape somewhere. We need some duct tape. We're fixed right up. <laughs> Little wrench. To illustrate the problem, the boys decide to rig up a smoke test so I could pour a man's wind tunnel. That'll hopefully show what the turbulent air is doing. I'll drive it down and have you guys look and watch the uh, smoke go around underneath and on top and see what kind of burble we get. Hold pressure on this. Well, we need to pull this a little harder. I'm up here to uh, fix the third in the triangle yeah. of wires. I don't want it to fall off. Don't worry, when he's done, it will never fall off. Okay. <laughs> the rigging takes a while. Once it's finally done, we get her out on the runway for the smoke test. And you got a radio. RV, you can have runway 26 left. It's solely yours. Uh, RV cleared for takeoff. Look at this. Is the RV on fire? Look at it. Look, look at it. It's streaming it out the side. Yeah, it's all it's jamming up wind. inside. Holy man. Look what it's doing. Look at how it's it on the back. It burbles. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, you know, watch that. There. I hope he stops. <laughs> is, is that smoke or the brakes? The results aren't exactly conclusive. The air dogs could have used a few million dollars and a few weeks in a real wind tunnel. But this is a budget program. The air dogs need to push on. I don't know why Rooster thinks I can do this. I'll give you that. We got fuel. We have fuel. We got two guys with uh, less brains than they should have. It's time to go flying. Mark heads out first. Go, go, go. The key here is to get the RV and the airplane traveling at the same speed. Basically, Mark needs to inch onto the landing platform. Kent makes it look easy as he does it once from the back seat. Miller's up to bat, so uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, here we go. I'm in the turn. Don't force it. 
Hey, you went by it. You weren't. You got to buy form on it. Mark struggles to get even close. Okay. Here we go. Get it on down. Here we go. Put it down. 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 You got to go down, man. Okay, you, you've lost it. Let's go. Abort. Abort. Before he even lines up, the abort call is made. The runway has run out. All I'm moving is my hands and my feet. I'm sweating like I'm running a marathon here. <laughs> he ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> I think to start out with, he was trying to be very calm. I guess he, and I think he was. And as it went on, it got to be more and more challenging. Don't look ahead. Look down only. I'll look ahead. But Mark isn't the kind of air dog that gives up easily. And he knew it was going to be hard to start with, and uh, he started concentrating. I got to hand it to him. You know, he didn't run away from the airport. He didn't go high. We didn't have to go search for him. He's, uh, he's in there going for it. Come on, airplane. Sometimes too much determination is a bad thing. Uh, don't get below that RV. I mean that. If he gets that wheel on the side, he's in trouble. The air dogs have their work cut out for them. They're trying to work through the physics of landing on a moving RV. First, the platform is tiny. Not a lot of space to put an airplane, but uh, we're going to do it. And the air rushing off the RV is turbulent, unpredictable. See on the back at Burgle. Okay. And the runway is way too short. Dry lake bed, that would be good. At 4,800 feet, it's less than half the length that Kent usually uses to perform his stunt. I think in order to get it done, I need about another 12,000 feet of runway. I'm going to have to work really fast. and I, I don't know. This is just going to be hard. I'm going to let you go as long as I possibly can. And if I say go around, there's no hesitation there. And I will if you don't. Oh, yeah, here he is. He's slipping in. This is going to be go time. In the air, Mark's the first to give it a try. Remember, he's logged no time in a tail dragger. I'm nervous for Miller, man. Bring it on down. Bring it down. So just flying this airplane is challenging enough. But once you get in there, forget the airspeed and fly formation. But each progressive pass, he gets closer. He's going to be able to touch a wheel. He's going to get, he might even get this thing on there. Wild, isn't it? You're doing all right, man. For the stunt to succeed, he needs to get both wheels on the RV and locked into the wheel wells. They're rolling. But each time he gets close, the RV seems to push him away. The problem, he isn't slipping in like Kent does. He keeps trying to fly directly onto the ramp. Hard work. Oh, yeah. Mark's beginning to feel the pressure. He decides to go for broke. I'll try one more. If you go below the RV, you're going to get in a dead air and won't hit the ground. That's, that's high critical, OK? Don't get that wheel caught underneath. There you go. You're all right. You're all right. Coming in, this is the best approach so far. Here we go. Get it on down. Here we go. Put it down, 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 down. Come on, Mark. Get on there, buddy. Watch your speed. With the runway rapidly running out, he actually gets the wheels down. Don't force it. For a second. OK, you've lost it. Let's go. And then pulls up. That's when things start to go really wrong. Whoa. And as I went off the front, the bow wave got a hold of me and just, just sucked me to the ground. I mean, it really kind of rattled me for a second. That was a close one. There's a bow wave in there, and, it was, and before the bow wave, there was a down because it pushes up. And when the wing got in that, the airplane dipped down a little bit in there, and it, it got fairly close to the tail. You see that? Yeah. And that's that's another kind of a critical thing. There's a few critical things. <laughs> Try it again. No, that's good. The pilot needs to know when to say no. That's right. Correct. Right, absolutely. Now, Mark has to be happy about at least one thing. He managed to get the plane back on the ground without scratching the paint himself or the air dog's sparkling reputation. I looked up one time, I was going 40 knots. I thought, oh, this thing's going to drop out of the sky. I'm dead meat. Power on, boom, I'm up. So I was trying to flare. I was watching the speeds. I mean, give me another, you know, Seven, eight months of training, I'll probably be able to do it. <laughs> 5,000 feet of runway, you would have got on there. 300 hours and no tail wheel time. I couldn't do that. And to be honest with you, Rooster, I was like, I don't know how you thought I could do this. Well, I mean. You want to have it out right now or what? <laughs> <laughs> but there's no time to play Alpha Air Dog now. Rooster's Rooster. up. And since this was his idea, Rooster needs to do at least better than Mark. Sweat factor's gonna increase significantly here. Right on. They're going. Okay, you're, you're beyond hope. Okay. 
running out of time here. First couple times, I believe what Rooster said was, I don't think I can do this. Jesus, I don't know how you do this. I really don't. He touched it. But Rooster is actually doing better than he thinks. He's slipping in and getting far closer than Mark ever got. He was on, yeah, he's getting the feel of it. Turned around and said, I think I can do this. I can do this. And you could tell that he got the fangs out on that, so to speak, and went in there and decided he was going to get it done. On Rooster's fourth try, he actually manages to get on, but runs out of runway before he can get those wheels locked in. Nicely done, Rooster. You were there. That was a key one. That built my confidence. Five tries later, and this time, Rooster sticks it. Keep pushing ahead. And locks it in less than 5,000 feet of runway. Holy! I did it! And he was determined to do it, and I was really proud of Rooster on that. Not too shabby for an air dog. He did it, man. <laughs> Holy. Holy work. Yeah, for sure, guys. That was awesome. I mean, that, you know what? Hats off. He does that. I mean, this is a pretty vanilla day. He does that on a lot shorter runway. Yeah, hats off to you, man. Mark, you too. Ken, thanks, man. So the air dogs can log another one. Rooster's got a feather in his cap. The adrenaline's going, man. Mark, he needs a little more work, but he's done better than anyone could have expected. At the end of the day, I loved it. It was a scream. And as for Kent, well, he's just happy to have his interstate cadet back in one piece, at least for now.